So in my 2012 GMT Sierra 2500 HD, my steering wheel is completely loose. And in today's video, we're gonna take care of that because driving down the road and the amount of plate in the steering wheel is a little obsessive. So let's go ahead and pull into the garage and we're going to replace the pitman arm, either arm, both the inner and outer tie rod. And then we're also going to replace the intermediate shaft on the steering column. So let's go ahead and pull it in and we'll take care of it. All right, so real quick, I went ahead and took the tires off both sides of the truck, and you can also see a tire underneath just for added precaution, but taking a look underneath here on the driver's side of the truck, I went ahead and replaced the shock in previous videos and also the sway bar link and sway bar bushing, and that is all Moog products, and along with that theme, I'm also doing Moog products for the upper control arm I'm replacing, the inner and outer tie rod, and then I'm also doing the pitman arm and idle arm on the steering rack. So that should go ahead and clear up any of the sounds and feedback I was getting in my steering wheel and also the loose feeling I was having in the steering wheel by replacing all these parts in conjunction with also not only tightening up the steering column, there's also a bolt you can tighten, and then I'm also going to replace the intermediate shaft. So I'm super excited to get all this replaced and make driving the truck a lot more enjoyable. But I also wanna take a look at kind of the wear and tear on this truck and terms of its mileage so it's right about 137,000 miles on the truck and the service history is pretty extensive in regards to lubrication and greasing of the joints and body of the truck and you can kind of see um, the bushings themselves are in pretty good shape here there's some grease that bled out over the years but overall in really good condition not a lot of uh, cracks on the bushings here and then also on the tie rod ends they're pretty full and in pretty good shape there's some faint cracking right about on top here um, but that's just because these are probably original tie rod ends, unfortunately, but a lot of play in those. And then up on the upper control arm here, um, I did notice some cracking right here on the bushings and you can also see it kind of splitting here. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of this today and hopefully this will fix any possible issues I have with this truck for some time. So let's get started. All right, so there's tons of videos online on how to do this, but I went ahead and dropped the front and rear skid plates here, and then I'm going to go ahead and drop the sway bar here, and it shows, again, four bolts holding it on here, and then you got the sway bar links you'll also wanna drop. So once you drop the sway bar, you'll actually have better access to the idler arm and then the pitman arm that's attached to the gearbox over here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so to remove the pitman arm and idler arm, I would highly recommend either a pickle Ford or a set like this from Amazon. It's about a 30 to $50 you can spend, but I went and spent about $50 and got the full set of poolers. And this will cover a wide range of applications that you might need for a truck. So if you're the kind of person who's already getting after this type of work, I'd go ahead and definitely invest in a set of poolers uh, because this will make the job significantly better. And let's go ahead and jump into my next tip here. All right, another tip I have here when you're working on the pitman arm and the iron arm, either one, you can see here I went ahead and dropped it from the steering rack. But what you wanna do is go ahead and leave the nut on the pitman arm because you don't want this thing to drop and fall on your face. And same thing for the either on the other side when doing this job. All right, so that cheap set from Amazon made this job significantly easier, both here on the pitman arm and over here on the idler arm. So yeah, definitely recommend investing in a good set of pullers because this is gonna make the job significantly easier. And I wanted to take a quick note here, when you pull the bolts out, it's going to be pretty challenging to pull it out because of the tight quarters and you can't pull it down because it actually catches here. So what I did, I actually put a pry bar in here and then pried it up and then over because you can't pull it up too high because it does hit the fan up here. So you kind of have to squeeze it in and out of this bracket. All right, so let's go ahead and swing over and take a look at the Moog idler arm and then compare it to what I just pulled out of the truck. All right, so this is Moog's idler arm. Uh, super simple here, it has a Zerk fitting up here on the housing and then also here on the ball joint. And it also comes with a castle nut and then a retaining pin for the joint down here. Um, let's take a look at the original one, which has 137,000 miles on it. Um, it's pretty much pretty loosey-goosey around the bracket here. And then you also have grease coming out of the seal here and then also down here. So it's pretty shot, uh, super flexible here. And then it also is a lot more nimble around here in the bracket housing. As you can see, I can turn it with one arm. So it's super flexible here while the Moog is very stiff and definitely worth the money when it comes to the steering components on this truck is investing quality parts. And I, I'm very hopeful that with Moog products, I'll get the life of the truck out of this. So, all right, so let's go ahead and throw this into the truck and move on to the pitman arm. 
Alrighty, so the idler arm is finally into its bracket here on the truck, and it was quite the hassle to get it in, but if you go ahead and pre-position the lower hand part to face the rear of the truck, it'll make it a lot easier when you're putting it in here. And just have some patience when putting it in, but yeah, once you have one bolt in, it makes things a lot easier. I started with the first bottom bolt here and then worked my way up to the top bolt here and kind of just wiggled it into place. But yeah, the idle arm is now in place. Let's go ahead and move into the pitman arm now. All right, so the pitman arm is off now. I did have to make a quick incision here with the angle grinder. So I cut through to loosen up and then I took a pitman arm puller and I was able to break it free. I did hammer it a little bit as you can see uh, to hopefully break it free, but after using the pitman arm, it just popped right off. So let's go ahead and we'll pick this up. I did loosen up the steering box. So that's a two bottom bolts here and then one up top. Once I did that, it was a lot easier to move around here um, and allowed me to pull this out. So let's go ahead and push this up We'll pull the pitman arm and we'll get the new one on. So a quick comparison here with the old pitman arm coming out of the truck. Like you can see, I made that incision here and I did make some markings. So I know where to put it right back to where it came from on the steering box. And then taking a look at the Moog product here. Yeah, same weight. It does have a Zerk fitting up here that came with the actual piece. So I'll go ahead and screw that in before I put it up there. Um, but yeah, really happy to get this in. And it's a lot tighter up top compared to the original one. So really excited to get that in there and then see what that does uh, for the steering. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this into the truck and attach it to the steering box. And then we'll work on the other side of the truck, getting the upper control arms and the inner and outer tie rods installed on the truck. And then we'll make our way up to the steering column. All right, and so I did carry on my marking. So I had the left, the middle and the right markings. And I utilized that, that channel right here between the teeth my middle and I carried it off to the teeth of the mood product here and then two to the right was the left side and then two to the left was the right side of the pitman arm here for marking the teeth and that carried on and reflected just like the OEM product so that's how I kept my markings and how I'm going to keep my steering box lined up so let's go ahead and pop this in and we'll go to the other side of the truck all right so i have the pitman arm onto the gearbox now and you actually see my markings on the pitman arm and then how i lined them up here on the gearbox down below you can kind of see them right there how i lined them up but this is overkill because the gearbox does have specific splines but i went ahead and marked it just in case because you never know what's going to happen and i'd rather have it marked than not marked so yep got that on i'm gonna torque it down and then we'll move off to the other side of the truck all right, so I'm bouncing around just a little bit. I just finished the passenger side over here. The upper control arm is installed, but it is loose as you can see. I did finish the tie rod end here and went ahead and torqued it down to I believe 45 foot pounds for this tie rod. And then also the inner tie rod screwed in. I did finish the idler, which is located right there. I went ahead and put the castle in and also the pin. So that's good to go. And then also the pitman arm on the other side of the truck is complete i'll zoom in there but pitman arm is installed and also the idler arm right there is installed so let's go ahead and swing over to the driver's side and we'll take care of the next portion of the truck all right so we're on the driver's side now i'm going to go ahead and loosen up the upper control arm here there's a bolt underneath here and then a bolt up here and then a bolt on this side what i'm going to try to do is not remove the inner fender well like i did the passenger side to make my life a lot easier when coming together so we're going to try that and then I also went ahead and took down the tie rod um, earlier when I was doing the pitman and iron their arm. So I went ahead and loosened that up. Super easy to break free. I literally just undid the bolt and then hammered the tie rod through the knuckle here. So that's already loose. And then the um, excuse me sway bar link is also loose. So just give me a little more access here when it comes to loosening up that inner tie rod. And the inner tie rod is literally just a bolt um, that you twist to the left here. I would just use an adjustable set of pliers and then it'll come right off. So pretty easy to replace. So let's go ahead and get started. And then I'll keep you guys posted as I hit key parts of this job. So let's get started. All right, so we got the upper control arm nice and loose. Went ahead and ended the bolts up here and I didn't have to remove the inner fender well here, but I did have to loosen up the shock down here to make way for the bolt to slide out of the right side of the upper control arm here. So that was the only thing I had to do to make this work. But yeah, I used a little pickle for it, broke this loose, and then I should be able to just pull this right on out. And I'll go ahead and compare the new one and the old one. And then I'll also show you the damage, or let's say wear, on the bushings here on the upper control arm, and then how loose this is. So this is probably part of the rattle that I have up front, among other things. So let's go ahead and pull this one out, and we'll compare the new one with this one. 
All right, so we have the Moog upper control arm here and then the OEM with I, what I assume is 130,000 miles because looking at the actual damage on the bushings and then just the, the ball junk being completely shot here. Um, but yeah, you can see how wobbly this is and you can see the grease actually coming out of the ball joint here. Let's go ahead and look at the bushings here. Um, there is splitting on the top. You can actually see some of the cracks there. And then on the inside, spinning around here, um, you can actually see a lot of the wear and tear there on the inner bushing. And this is on both sides of the bushings. Uh, with the Moog product exactly the same, um, these are both left and right, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, excuse me, driver or passenger side for the upper control arms here. And then the ball joint is a lot stiffer. <laughs> I can't even move it with an arm, but yeah, a lot stiffer on the ball joint. And these come ungreased, so we'll go ahead and put some grease in here when we finish installing this. Um, and then we should be able to wrap up with greasing all the other Zerk fittings on the truck. And then it also comes with, like I said, a Zerk fitting that will install to the top here. So we'll go ahead and screw it in right there and we'll move off to the next part. All right, so we're on the driver's side right now and I just finished installing the upper control arms here and I was able to accomplish this without removing the inner fender well. And then I installed the tire back onto the truck so it's sitting underneath its own weight, which will allow me to go ahead and torque down the bolts here. And for the bolts up top, it's gonna be 140 foot pounds for these and then 37 foot pounds for the ball joint right here. And you can see I went ahead and greased this. So once I finish torquing this side down, we'll go ahead and go around and make sure everything is greased, which I believe I went ahead and accomplished it all, but it's gonna be the tie rod ends on both sides of the truck, the upper control arms, and then on the idler arm, you have both bracket housing and then the actual idler arm. And then lastly will be the pitman on my half degree. So we'll go ahead and take care of all that and then we'll move off to the intermediate shaft. Well, I noticed that I do have some type of axle leak here on the passenger side of the truck. Um, at one point we'll take care of that if it gets worse, but for right now, uh, let's go ahead and finish off and move on to installing the intermediate shaft. So anytime you touch your steering wheel column, what you want to do, especially on these trucks, is go ahead and take your seatbelt and run it through the base of your steering wheel and lock it in. Because the clock spring doesn't lock, so if you didn't lock it in place, the clock spring will at least spin, and then that basically ruins the clock spring, and you don't want that to happen because that's another part to replace. Additionally, what we're going to take care of is go ahead and tighten up the bolts up here, so you'll pop the cover off here. Just use a little bit of force, and it'll come right off. And then there's a bolt um, on the left side down here. We'll zoom in. Give you a little eye right there and yellow on this side and the complete opposite side there's another bolt here my steering wheel is locked in place right now so i can't turn it but you'll go ahead and tighten those up nice and snug you don't want to over tighten them because it does lock into plastic but go ahead and tighten those up and that'll reduce at least some play in your steering wheel so now that this is locked in place let's go ahead and disconnect the intermediate shaft and get the new one in all right, one thing I wanted to add is the bolts down here are T25, and I also took some zip ties and locked it in place as extra precaution because I did not want the clock spring to fail. So go ahead and locked it in place not only with zip ties, but also the seat belt as extra precaution. All right, so I did want to explain a couple things here. So for the bolts here, they're T25 Torx bits that you'll tighten up down here on the actual steering column to loosen up some of the slack in the steering wheel. Additionally, I wanted to kind of explain there's three major components to the steering column, and that's going to be the upper intermediate and lower the upper is basically from the steering wheel about halfway down to the brake pedal and that begins the intermediate which goes through the firewall to the other side of the firewall and that's what we're replacing today so we're going ahead and loosening up the bolts underneath the dash here and then on the other side of the firewall we'll go ahead and loosen those and we'll be able to pull the intermediate shaft from the firewall so let's go ahead and take care of that all right so on the driver's side here i went ahead and loosened up the bolts down there and it's going to be a 16 millimeter to loosen the bolt down there and there's a locking tab on the engine side so it makes it super easy it's not torqued down too much so pretty easy to loosen up now let's go ahead and pull these out and we'll move on to the interior side you can also see where i marked the shaft there with a little bit of red sharpie and that's just to keep orientation so anytime i'm messing with steering components i always mark orientation just to be on the safe side it's kind of overkill but just something i do let's go ahead and pull that bolt out and with the locking tab and then we'll work on the inside of the truck Alrighty, so let's go ahead and slide underneath the dash here and I'll show you what I've done already here at the intermediate shaft on the other side of the firewall. So looking up underneath the brake pedal here, you'll look up and you'll see the intermediate shaft. So up and to the right from the brake pedal. And you can see where I went ahead and marked it with the red sharpie to keep orientation like I did on the outside. And then the bolts, which are right there. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. And on the left side is gonna be a 15 millimeter, and then on the right side will be a 13 mil. And these are super loose, per se. 
in terms of torque. So I believe they're only down to like 35 to 37 foot pounds. So super easy to loosen up. All right, so let's go ahead and back these bolts off the intermediate shaft here. One on the left side is a 15 mil and on the right is a 13 millimeter. And you can see where I marked them, just keep them in line here with red Sharpie. So once we pull that bolt out, we'll be able to go on the other side, loosen up the rubber boot that's holding the intermediate shaft through the firewall and then we'll be able to pull it through and then put the new one in. All right, so now that we moved the bolt on the other side of the firewall inside the cabin, We'll go ahead and take the rubber boot off now. And on the rubber boot, there's gonna be an eight mil, excuse me, right here, eight mil, eight mil. And then down below here, there'll be an eight mil that you'll have to get to. That's probably the hardest one to get to, honestly, and will take the most time. But let's go ahead and back those three bolts off and then we'll be able to pull the intermediate shaft through the firewall. Alrighty, so I loosened up and removed all three of those bolts on the rubber housing there. And to be honest, once you break them loose, they you can use your fingers to back them off. I did drop one down into the black hole down there, so probably not getting that one back. So I'll have to go pick up another one. But honestly, they're just little captive nuts. I'll pull one up here uh, for you guys to look here. I'm trying to drop it but so that's the little bolt and i use a 10 mil some say it's eight but i was able to back it off with a 10 mil and yeah just use my fingers to back the rest of it once i broke it loose so let's go ahead and pull the intermediate shaft from the upper shaft it'll pull the intermediate shaft from the lower shaft here so let's go ahead and replace those all right so quick comparison here as you can see the universal joint is staying in place i can move this around and it's nice and stiff so really happy about that it does look a little bit different up top here the round part but yeah this as you can see completely worn out so yeah i think i found the uh this issue and you can feel the vibration too so yeah this thing is completely shot so yeah really excited to get this new one in and see how it stiffens up that steering wheel so let's get after it and I also wanted to add that I carried off the marking. So in red here was the original marking. I moved it over to black. And then on the other side here, you can see my new marking up top here that matches the one that was in there before. So I went ahead and marked it the same. Um, so the orientation will remain exactly the same the way it came out. So, all right, so let's go ahead and put it in. All right, so I got everything back together. I put the two remaining bolts that I had back on the rubber housing there, and then I'm gonna order the third one that I dropped because there's no way I'm getting that back. And then I have to go ahead and torque this down to 35 foot pounds. And then for the one underneath the dash, I'll go ahead and torque down to 37 foot pounds. So let's go and torque these down. We'll be done with the job. All right, so we just completed everything. We torqued everything down. Let's go ahead and test this thing out, see if it actually worked or not. We'll cut off the zip ties here, keeping the steering wheel in place. All right, first off, thank you guys so much for staying to the end of this video. This will be a wrap for part one of the series. In part two, you'll see if this actually made a difference in terms of the steering. And then we also discovered more damage up front. So we're going to be replacing the lower control arm, wheel bearings, CV axles, and various other components. And then a little touch at the end in part three of this series to really tie everything together. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts and comments down below. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks.